Um, thank you all for coming in, most importantly for staying. Um, I'm going to tell you about a study uh, that was an ECR grant um, that involved nearly 900 WA students. And it's all about technology and mental health. Fortunately, we didn't go to Matt Zucker Island to collect our data. Um, I'm going to tell you through the story of Alex, uh, which is just an unidentifiable person. I apologize if Alex, the picture gives you nightmares, but I do know lots of really good psychologists. Craig will, I'm sure, help you out, no problem. Um, now, Alex is a 14-year-old government school student and currently has profiles on Twitter, Facebook, Skype, YouTube, Google+, and Tumblr, and accesses these generally using a laptop, smartphone, or iPad. Um, but also has a, uh, an iPod, an Xbox, a PSP, uh, generally uses a webcam on a, at least weekly basis. Now in terms of online activities, Alex typically spends um, about three or more hours a day on, on the internet, four or more hours a day um, on the weekends on the internet, and that's for purely non-school related purposes. Uh, generally, Alex is on Facebook about 30 times a day, um, interacting with one of more than 300 friends, and so a lot of this is during school time. Uh, in fact, Alex typically has about five to 600 friends on Facebook by the age of 14, and you can see that by the age of 16, 17, that's up around uh, well over 1,000 in some cases. Um, most of those Alex knows offline. Uh, he typically sends more texts than calls, but generally interacts mostly online. So now, given that Alex spends a good deal of time online, there's also a chance of some negative stuff happening, and in fact, uh, Alex is one of a small number of students, about 2% in this case, uh, who's been cyberbullied. So even though the prevalence rate's quite low, the effects are quite, quite damaging. Now in trying to help Alex figure out what was going on, we discovered that some of the cyberbullying was purely a function of how much time was spent on Facebook. I'm using it as an analogy for all social networking sites. Um, and this was particularly the case on the weekends. So the more it was used on the weekends, and to a lesser extent during the week, the more likely the cyberbullying was. In addition, the more social networking site accounts, and the older that Alex is, the more likely the cyberbullying is to occur. So now Alex was feeling quite depressed and anxious about all of this, so we wanted to help to minimize the negative mental health effect and emotional health impacts, so we looked at the ways in which Facebook impacted on these issues. What was clear was that the number of hours on the weekend and the number of accounts that Alex had were significantly uh, related to the severity of depression and anxiety in these students. The same applied to emotional and behavioral problems, and also the proportion of friends that were not known offline. So these are online-only friends. So the more online-only friends you have, the worse things are. Now this would again be, be very much worse if Alex was female. And um, Alex shared with me that the way in which cyberbullying was happening was primarily through emails and text messages, as opposed to comments being made on Facebook or embarrassing pictures or videos being posted online. And so we wanted to know what, what the effect of that was. Um, Contrary to people's perceptions, and there's some interesting research coming out of Switzerland on this topic actually, uh, this private form of cyberbullying, so texts and emails, was actually significantly more damaging in terms of mental health than the public form um, on symptoms again of depression and anxiety. However, Alex, when Alex was publicly cyberbullied, so through Facebook or videos or pictures being posted online, and there was a, a seemingly pressing need to react in some way. And this was typically overt behavioral stuff. So maybe this is to save face or to sort of not show any sign of weakness, which will exacerbate any offline bullying. And this resulted in more conduct problems, emotional problems, peer relationship problems, and fewer pro-social behaviors. Now for the first time here, we're starting to get a really good insight into critical issues around mental health effects associated with not just technology use, but cyberbullying in particular, and also any um, help-seeking behaviors. Um, of course, when Alex experiences both private and public, things are very much worse. Now what can we do to help? Um, sorry, I'm getting a call at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> Suicide and never leaves. <laughs> First, we need to develop a better understanding of how Alex thinks about these things. So we've developed and published a task called the So Moral Task, which is a first-person perspective um, task looking at moral reasoning. And we've shown this to be superior than traditional tasks, which have a history of about 50 years in this area. And this is particularly the case with kids with serious traumatic brain injuries. We're currently using it in a functional MRI to look at the neural underpinnings of moral reasoning and aggressive behavior in adolescence. And we're developing it into an iPad version as well. Uh, we're looking at developing um, uh, awareness raising through a, a video game called Dragon's Quest. 
And given that Alex doesn't often get opportunities to test and practice out these things, we're looking at developing um, Xbox Connect games. Sorry, I have to cut that short. So to wrap up, technology is universally used, great, as long as we give kids appropriate support and guidance around it. Thank you.